So that means, uh, like for the, each time unit, it's just going to retain the same frequency. That's correct. So the master sends the sequence at the, like, at the setup time? Yes. When or at least everyone sequence. agrees. So everyone, I mean, everyone has a pseudo random number generator, and the unique device ID is basically the seed to that generator. Oh, okay. so, so as long as they uh, know that. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Is there a question over here? Question over here? That's the, that's the hopping. We can't have two slaves transmitting at the same time with two different frequencies. No, that's not how it's set up. That's not how it's set up. So everyone uses, um, it, it's, it's uh, basically, so if you imagine uh, this spread out over the diagram I had over here, you would have master, slave, master, slave, yeah. master, slave, and so on like that. So the idea is if you compress it all down at any given time, it's only using one finger. That's just how it works. So I guess we have our own spectrum. So that's right. Two things on the same time. Right. So I mean, uh, if you wanted to, if you wanted to redesign your own personal area network standard, you could do it that way. The reason why it's done this way, um, in principle, you shouldn't. I mean, uh, basically, you have to play nice in the ISM band. So it's probably not a good idea to occupy the entire ISM band with all of your information because other people have to use it too, and that would also defeat the point of frequency hopping because then you'd be using the entire band and you'd, you'd adopt the negative repercussions of, of, of always using some of those frequencies that you're being interfered with. But then, let's say S2 did not hear the sequence that S1 was going to take these three back. Yes. It's going to interfere with S1 if S1 wants to retransmit. Right, so. The master we, won't be able to do it. That's correct. So you're hoping that won't happen. But, I mean, so this deals with one problem. Uh, which is the, uh, uh, the synchronization issue of some users using a different frequency and others using the same one. So now, using this method, all users will be always using the same frequency because that's the way the protocol works. You won't deal with the problem of interference. So yeah, uh, this will get wiped out. But on the other hand, everyone's still synchronized. Question here. Sorry, It's basically every. Everyone in these nodes will know, oh, it's time five. All right, based on what we know, it should be at frequency five and time six. So we're going to who is sending for how long, like time six? We're trying to That's right. This. Okay. So as far as the, as far as the, I mean, you could you could say it this way. The, the hop sequence is sacrosanct. It doesn't matter what's going on or who's doing what. Everyone is always in the same, <coughs> the same hop interval. The only exception is if you want to transmit for longer than one slot, you just stay at the same. We can have like two megahertz. Pardon me? We can have two megahertz and double the bandwidth. Uh, one. I mean, this is this is the way they wrote the standard, so. <coughs> Does that change? Uh, I'm actually not aware of uh, any different version. I'm sure they exist, I'm just not aware of them. Do they exist? Okay. Okay, um, just one final point. Uh, I won't get into the exact structure of these slots, but I will say this. Um, the most data, the max data per slot, in the single slot case, is 343 bits. So given that information, What is the peak master bit rate? Three forty-three bits divided by uh, sorry, uh, peak. That's not what I wanted. I wanted net master bit rate. So yeah, you're right. It would be uh, 343 minus the guard, but let's let's talk about the net master bit rate. In which case, it's 343 bits divided by what? How often does the master get to send 343 bits? 625. Yeah, every every 625. So this is 625 microseconds, but it doesn't get to send that again until over here. 
That's twice our twenty cats of base type tomorrow. Yeah. And if you work that out, two times six hundred twenty-five. Uh, so that is uh, three hundred forty-two bits divided by one point two five milliseconds, which is um, not so calculated this, but I forgot to write it on my page. Uh, I think the answer is two. Does anybody have a calculator? That's your answer. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 270. I think it's, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 270. 274? 274. 272. Okay, I, have, I heard two different answers, uh, but it's in the neighborhood of 270. Two hundred seventy four thousand. Two hundred seventy four thousand. Two hundred seventy four thousand. Yeah. Okay. So we all agree it's two seventy four point four. Okay. Um, if there is only <laughs> one slave in the network, what is the peak? What is the net slave bit rate? Same thing. Why? Let's let's assume let's assume it's always one slot. So it's the same, right? Because then I have master slave one, master slave one, master slave one. How about if there are two slaves? Half of this, which would be uh, one one thirty seven ish, one thirty seven point two. If there are three. Question over here. So you said master slave one, master slave one, master. Does it always end on a slave or a master, or does it depend? Because in this case, you said oh, it ends on a slave, so it's the same. But oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, so we're, we, in that case, we'd be talking about average, right. uh, the average. So like, it wouldn't really matter where it ended because in a limited large time, that's zero. Um, okay. So that's what I wanted to say about Bluetooth. Any questions? Yes. The device is there. How do they first meet up to uh, arrange the frequency mapping number? Uh, good question. So it's basically one device uh, informs the other that it wants to transmit. And my understanding is that that first device becomes the master. So it's 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 all about deciding who gets to be the master and who gets to be the slave. So when they first when the first master says hello, what frequency do they use? Um, that's a good question, actually. I don't know. Normally, normally you have to set it to a waiting. Like you have to set your one yeah, device to like wait for something. Is it the other one? Right. Yeah, there's some kind of time. So there must be some kind of broadcast message. So like have some sort of frequency that you set up. Okay. Um, in our last question over here. Just about the spread model. I think something that I think is the most efficient. So it's not it's not the most efficient. Um, if you carefully design your system, you can do better. Uh, but it, uh, the randomness, what that does is it gives us robustness. It doesn't give us optimality, but it gives us robustness. Because if we end up in any frequency band where we're having a problem, we quickly jump out of it. So in other words, it sort of spreads out. Um, it, it, uh, it makes us see the average channel. So if the channel, if some parts of the channel are super good and some are super bad, we don't have to identify which are which because we're, we, we will sort of see the average. So that's what it is. It's not the optimal. It's not the optimal.